been fighting a long time. We are outnumbered by machines working around the clock without quit. You are not alone. This is John Connor. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. You have an asthma attack? <laughs> what's, what's going on with you? Sounds <laughs> 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 like, like one of Jerry's kids over there. <laughs> Remind me not to use that mic after. I, I know. Burn that. <laughs> the swine flu mic it, over it's there. It's funny to think that he quit smoking two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and still going. <laughs> He's a machine. Yeah, if you can't tell by his uh, coughing or spasm attack, whatever, this is the Terminator review. Salvation. Terminator salvation. I know. We have come from the future to save your sins. I know. That's what you expect. You expect John Connor to come back like in a tent throwing Bibles at everybody with a tambourine, all the robots are dancing and shit. <laughs> so in this Terminator, now we've had three Terminator movies, and they've kind of been the same movie. They've started out with somebody coming from the future, going to kill somebody while somebody's trying to defend that person from being killed. Right. This one goes into the war that they've talked about for so many years. But in the beginning, we only got to see like a Terminator step on a skull and a bunch of rockets being shot off. This takes us into the post-apocalyptic nuclear war world that John Connor does live in now. Yeah, I got to say, man, um, the future don't look so bright from looking at movies. I mean, you look at the Matrix and looking at this, it's like, shit, maybe we should just let the machines just take over and and maybe they'll set things up nice because fighting them don't seem to do us any good. And what movies are you going to do about a utopian future, though, really? It's like two hours of a bunch of people being happy. (laughs) Woohoo! <laughs> That's not a good movie. Oh, no. We want to see robots killing people and people plugged into shit and all sorts of stuff for entertainment. But in real life, you know what it'd be like. It'd be like everybody would be like the house slave. Yes, sir, Mr. Robot, sir. <laughs> That's right. Here's your <laughs> glass of oil, sir. I no, mean. no. In the real world, it would be the Terminator brought to you by Pepsi. These machines are Republicans, except these are Republicans that haven't learned how to make money off this. Oh, yeah. These are like the very worst. It's like all the worst bullshit without profiteering. What kind of world is this? Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Skynet is Walmart and all the robots are brought to you by Coke. Yeah, you know, you're exactly right. I mean, it would be just one big advertisement. And that's how you get people. You don't fucking go out and shoot them. You just like give them a bunch of stuff to buy and the robots just got to stand back and look. But to have an action movie, you do have to have robots going around taking out humans, and that's what you have here. This particular story takes place in 2018, not too far away from where we are right now. Skynet pretty much has happened. They have had the robots taking over the world. Most of humanity is gone, but we do have John Connor. Now, he is running around, and he is seen as this prophet, but most people are saying... Oh man, you ain't shit. You ain't you ain't gonna do nothing. I wouldn't say it's most people, no. but the higher up generals yeah. are like the yeah. muckety mucks. Wait, you know what? It's that same Star Wars scenario where they're like, "Oh yes, Vader, you and your outdated religion," and now it's like you, John Connor, and this whole prophecy. Yeah, Tosh, you it's- and your audio cassettes to put your book on tape away about the future. Yeah, and, because and yeah, fight the, the war with us. The well, common yeah. man has his faith in Batman in this particular case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean because we've had this big buildup of John Connor. In the previous movies here he's just a he's just a soldier he's no no more no less he's not really that much of a leader he's leading a little small platoon he's talking to the resistance but he's still just a soldier as at this point that he realizes he needs to meet his father Carl Reese who in this story is younger than he is well yeah it's the whole Terminator time loop of okay he's born of Kyle Reese but he has to send Kyle Reese back to hatch him so that he can come to the future and then send Kyle Reese back to the past so he can father him and he can be born later well, and then yeah, hatch him. Yeah. He, he sent back a dick in a box for his mama. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> there's a chalkboard that's been erased and rewritten on many, many times yeah. trying to figure this out. Well, it's funny because he knows Kyle Reese is out there, but he also knows that Kyle Reese is younger than he is. So he says, Okay, I got to go out and save this kid who, weirdly enough, is my father. Otherwise, I won't be born. This is Connor. Connor, are your men ready? Negative. Nobody is ready. We are not. You are not. We must abort the attack. The game has changed. What are you talking about? All our elements are past the release points. They are in assault position. Then delay the attack. At least delay the attack. I have a chance to infiltrate Skynet and rescue those prisoners. Give me that opportunity. No, absolutely not. This is not the time for a rescue mission. 
What you ask for will undermine the whole operation. Skynet has Kyle Reese. And that is his fate. No, it's our fate. I have to save him. He is the key. The key to the future, to the past. Without him, we lose everything. Now, to throw things into a different mix here, we introduced this character named Marcus Wright, who all we know about him at the beginning of the movie is that he is on death row and somehow miraculously has woken up into the future after this apocalypse has happened. And we, we begin to like question as we learn more about him and what he's made of, whether he's working for the resistance or through some odd ways, he's working for the machines. So this isn't the previous Terminator movies that we've seen before. It is a totally different film, and that's either going to work against this movie for some people, or some people will probably appreciate the fact that we don't have a chase movie anymore. Um, that, you know, okay, you're right. I was tired of the previous thing here. You know, I mean, yeah, we've had the show. Two seasons have been nothing but the chase movie <laughs> for two seasons, which I, by halfway through the second, I just kind of like, okay, enough already. Can we get something different? And you're right. This is something different. It's just, I couldn't help but feel that it, it, it tried to succeed by two things. Uh, one, by throwing in lots and lots of references to the previous film, just peppered in in almost a sort of irrational manner. Uh, just like, okay, well, remember, this, everybody loves this line. We'll throw it here. Uh, even though there's no way that person would know it. There's no real reason for it to be there. Uh, Coincidence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. Coinky dink. But it's just kind of silly, and it took me out of the film in the way that they used it. Uh, but the other, the, the biggest problem with it is that the dialogue is really bland on the whole. It's just kind of, wow, this is action movie 101 writing. Now, if it wasn't for the fact that in the last reel, all of a sudden they show you all the shit we came there to see, like mm -hmm. what it looks like in the Terminator factory and just like all sorts of little neat, cool, like, wow, I always wanted to see them do this with the movie, then I'd almost have to trash the whole film. But that yeah. last third really does bring it back out of, the, of a, a, a vortex it was starting to spiral down into for me. I might feel like you, except not quite so negative. I mean, I'll agree with the, with the writing where what it doesn't have that the other films had was, no pun intended, is heart. Um, <laughs> and, and that, you know, it just wasn't that, that spark. It wasn't the things you, you laugh at. You don't really get to know the characters. I mean, to me, this is the problem with doing any movie that's about a war, like with Star Wars. And they say, we're going to focus on the Clone Wars. I'm like, don't do that because the war is never interesting. But uh, that last third kicked so much ass. I, I forgive the first two thirds of it. I, I love you know, getting to see all the cool shit. And it's funny because a lot of the, what happens in the first two thirds of the movie all depends on this big surprise, except you know, they, they hold it back like you don't know. But not only can you probably guess what the surprise is, but it's already been spoiled because they've already made a toy for it that's out. I, I even blogged well, about that. Well, it's in the trailer. Yeah, they put it's, it's, the trailer. it's in the trailer. Yeah. Which yeah. is a dumb move to make. It's the worst kept secret of this movie, yeah. and the whole movie revolves around that secret, which is one of the, the few flaws of the marketing of this film, but not the film itself. Because the film itself actually does a really good job of keeping what secrets there are still. I kind of agree with you, but disagree with you in the, in the sense of what this is in, in terms of being a war movie, because this is kind of after the major war. These, this is more like skirmish fighting. The last vestiges of humanity are lashing back, but they're not organized at all. We're not watching the war. We're watching after humanity lost and is trying to kind of grasp its way back. I really like this movie. I think this movie's a lot of fun. I think it has a few flaws to it. I think there's kind of a, a character flaw about halfway through the movie that I really don't want to go into, but there's a character that does something that just seems so out of place, and they do it to kind of move the story along to a certain extent, but I was kind of like, when I was sitting there, I'm like, why in the hell is this character doing is it yeah. the, is it the woman i know yeah. it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's that ripley moment where she goes back to save the cat and he's like what's wrong with you you stupid bitch exactly well this it, this movie cribbed heavily from aliens as well if yeah. you noticed and a lot of points where it was like do you do realize that aliens and terminator 2 weren't the same movie right mcgee because oh, he steals like they, they basically were. he let's, steals let's whole honest. sequences from it it's like okay <laughs> all right well that's fine but, but no, but, at least we, I recognize what you're doing. Yeah. But every bit of every bit of action in this movie is awesome. There was not a single action scene where I was like, you know, they kind of half-assed that or they missed an opportunity. No, they took opportunities. Yeah, McGee is clearly an action director yeah. because there's a lot of it where I thought I might have got bored, but like I'd be on the edge of my seat or just some shit would happen. I'd be like, God damn. Well, no, I mean, look. Okay, let's let's get over this shit, all right? Yes, Mac G is his name. Okay, we've had years to 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 listen to this and make fun of it and the guy's a good director, all right? Yeah, we want to tell him he's a leprechaun or he's a white wannabe rapper. No, he's a good director, okay? I mean, and this movie is well directed, especially in the action scenes. 
Now, the dialogue is bad in some parts, but there are some parts of the dialogue is good. I, you know, and I'm making fun of you, but I, I agree with you exactly that they shouldn't have thrown in that dialogue from previous movies. It does take you out the film. There's two lines of dialogue in there. I'll be back and come with me if you want to live. And they both don't really fit. But he is good with actors. I think Mark is right. Who uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, what's, what was the guy's name? Um, uh, Sam Worthington, who yeah. is the Marcus Wright character, oh, okay. the death row guy. Yeah. Thought he was great in this movie. Uh, and look, Christian Bale is always good. I mostly had a problem with the supporting characters that just kind of seem to be thrown in because of who they are. Common shows up in the movie, and some. I mean, they, they, he's really not all that good. No, yeah. no, yeah. and that's but what I'm saying. It's funny, but it's one of these things where they had to get somebody. Yeah, it shouldn't have been Common, but that role, well, there wasn't a whole lot to that role. Well, that's why I'm saying it's a supporting role. They didn't need somebody like Common there because first of all, you say, "Oh, that's Common." I mean, Common should have just showed up with a big gold chain that said Common on it because it's clearly that they put the camera on. Common, <laughs> but there's times when Common says a lot of dialogue, and he's like, "Yo, man, we did it. It's beautiful. We blew oh, that up that robot. Horrible. That yeah. was really bad. we we blows up some robots, man. I love it. You know, and it's like, all right, Kick man. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I like Common. I don't think Common's a bad actor. He just didn't fit in his movie. I, that's why I have to disagree with you about him being a good a- actor director. I think he's a terrible director with actors, but I think he's an excellent action director. And he reminds me a lot of Robert Rodriguez in that fashion. Ooh, that I, no, 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 don't put that on. I'm dude. sorry, but Come I on. have to. It's like it's not like he's got this solid resume of work behind him. Rodriguez has a better resume of work than McG does. But, 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 and but, but, Rodriguez's action is shitty too. See, I don't agree with you. I like Rodriguez's action. I think it's he can't only, direct actors. All, all, all Rodgers yeah. can do is rip off John Woo. <laughs> I got to say, no, I think Mac G is, a, is, is an excellent action director. I mean, every time they gave us what we want to see, which is robots, which in this movie we get every shape and form of robot. I mean, we get robots that swim. We get robots that turn into motorcycles. We get And these robots get, kick the shit out of the Transformers. I was about to say, we get robots where we, if you complain about the Transformers, they got a they got pretty much a transform in this movie that you're right. You just kicked the shit out of Optimus Prime. Optimus yeah. Prime look at that shit and be like, I'm going home, man. <laughs> right. I, I'm he going back. Leaking I, yeah, yeah I, I'm going back to Cybertron. I can't fuck with this right here. <laughs> Y'all can have it. Now but, you've gone too far, <laughs> sir. I was going to say, your gay robots. At long are, last, have you no shame? <laughs> your gay robots are going to be in the next big summer movie. Yeah, there, even think. Michael Bay is looking at them like, shit! <laughs> but, but no. You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Why'd you, why'd you have to... Why'd you have to be that? I can see Michael Bay render the shot with American flag and when them terminate rock, get your fucking ass on it. <laughs> Just kick him on out the way. Shit, wrong movie, man. But no, my, no, I like the movie. And I and I'm probably more on Carl outside on this because uh we were talking earlier. Oh, I like oh well I didn't lot. know what to degree you liked it, but oh, I liked it quite a bit. Okay, I enjoyed this movie a lot. I think it's a fun movie. I think the problem with the movie though is that one, if we're used to having uh, a movie where we have clear cut villains and clear cut uh, uh, heroes. And here we have heroes and villains, but it's just, they seem to be mixed into a bunch of action that we're not really hating somebody and we're not really rooting for John Connor. John Connor might be just an average soldier in this, but that's the problem. We need to like have this feeling of, oh, that's John Connor. He's in for great things. Really don't get it in this movie. Yeah. Well, the big thing with this movie, though, is that we watch. We watch them kind of play back and forth between these characters, but then they lead us to this ending, and we know, having watched the Terminator series, what's supposed to happen next. We know what this next thing is, and and we know where this story is going. What we don't know is what happens to John Connor after that. And we get to this point where it feels like the story is going one direction, is going to give us everything we need to finish this Terminator story, but also lead us down a road to where we don't know what happens next. Because nobody knows what happens to John Connor after he sends Kyle Reese back. Right. Because we've never seen that future. We know a little bit about it. We, From the very first movie, we knew, we knew enough to know that the story doesn't end with this movie. Right. Like, as far as his story goes. In fact, this is a prequel in a way. But right. that's the problem with this film is that the film then decides to go down a road to go, oh, no, 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 don't worry. We're setting up two more films and leaves you kind of feeling unresolved rather than feeling like you've seen yet another great Terminator movie. And it's so good up until the point that they go, ah, look forward to the next movie. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. Because I was walking out with Jason and uh, <clears throat> he said, what do you think about the movie? I said, I, I liked it. But I said, uh, the, besides what I just mentioned a little while ago, is that the movie doesn't feel like it has a real goal. Now, in this movie, I think like you and you're right. When you said a movie should, 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 even though it's part of a of a of a trilogy, those movies should kind of feel at least for the first one 
have some sense of self-containment. Mm-hmm. And like Star Wars did it. Yes. You know, they came back, but we, Star Wars, that, that's it. We could this, like, we stand that movie alone.